Hi there and welcome to this video. This is the third in the series of ideas and inspirations for photography and if you haven't seen the previous ones there's an introductory video which I'll put a link above um, for you to click through to and it'll give some context. In this video our challenge is clouds. Um, often clouds are taken for granted or even moaned about as ruining um, the light. However, often they can be a subject in their own right, or at least a key part of an image. As this image of the Golden Temple in Kyoto shows, without the clouds, the sky would be very flat, and there wouldn't be the clouds in the reflection on the pond in front of the temple. So they really add to the image. Likewise, this image of a cactus down in, in Arizona, um, if it just had a, a a clear blue sky behind it, it would be a very different image and almost look perhaps false. So the clouds add something um, to it. But when you're shooting clouds, don't just think about the clouds, think about the foreground image. Do you want something in the foreground? Again, the clouds play a similar role in this image. This would have been a beautiful image in its own right without the clouds, but I think the clouds really break up the sky and add something to the image and draw the eye um, across um, the image. So really be thinking about that foreground. How are the clouds working with the other components in the, um, in the image? Equally, don't be afraid to focus upwards and really look at the sky as the heart of the image and the clouds. In this image I wanted to create um, really an image about the enormity of the space and how this hotel or this building in the background and the foreground here um, was really isolated. So do think about different crops, different angles on topics to tell a different story or portray a different um, image. Equally, think about this, this image. Without the clouds, it would be a very different image. The office block perhaps would be stark and there. However, really, this is an image of two parts. It's the glass office block, the modern man-made office block, with the, na the natural clouds on the right-hand side, which gives the image a very different feel. So really think about what's the image you're trying to create? Equally, clouds can be really useful in sunrise and sunset photos. This image, the, the beautiful pink light, this is in Nice where the light is absolutely to die for. And as the sun went down, the clouds really picked up that pink and red colours. Without those clouds, you'd have just been left with the graduated sky at the horizon. So it makes a big difference. Equally, be thinking about should you be doing a long exposure so you capture the movement in the clouds. You know, clouds aren't static. They do tend to move and therefore can add a sense of movement to an image. Equally, think about other processing um, techniques, whether it's in-camera or post-processing. This is the Opera House in Oslo, very modernist, stark piece of architecture. And I just happened to be there when it was really intense storm clouds overhead. And I wanted to get an image. It wasn't the image I was looking for. However, the clouds worked well with that foreground um, interest in, in terms of the um, architecture. Equally, you know, clouds can be great from above. It's unlikely we're all going to be flying anytime um, soon. But do think about different angles. There are many different types of clouds. It's about how the light plays off of the clouds. And that's why it's such a great topic. So do think about the composition. Do think about the light. Do think about the story you're trying to tell with your image or images. Think about the settings. In this one, it's less about the um, the individual settings. This, clouds are a great opportunity to practice exposure. And this is where mirrorless cameras are really good. Because clouds are often very light colours, white, you're going to need to think about exposure compensation in a number of situations so you don't blow out the highlights in the clouds and have um, a well exposed foreground. And therefore think about what functionality are you going to use to help you get that exposure right? Are you going to use the histogram? 
if you've got a mirrorless camera? Are you going to use some of the highlight overexposed options where it, the, the, um, any overexposed highlights will flash on the LCD screen. There's lots of opportunities to help us in modern mirrorless cameras. So if you've got one of those, that's going to be a great opportunity to test some of that. If not, it's going to help you really gauge and make sure you're exposing um, for images where there are very bright portions. So there are many different types of clouds many different opportunities. Hope you find this a great idea for the weekend, a little bit of inspiration. If you do, you know, let us know how you get on in the comments below. Leave us a link to where you're posting your images. It'd be great to share them in the community. If you enjoyed this video, of course, do hit subscribe, do hit the notification bell and you'll be notified of future videos in this series. We've got a lot more topics coming up and I look forward to seeing you in a future video.